this second coming of dot com, uh, people are believing that they're doing something special in an environment like this, and they're not. Um, I think this is an environment that. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com Weekend Update Show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Hope everybody had uh, a great uh, Thanksgiving. Just a quick, uh, quick announcement before we uh, get going. Uh, today is uh, the last day uh, to take advantage of um, the really, really cool offer we made for Black Friday. I know a lot of you guys uh, have been kind of on the fence. Again, pivots are very specific. They're not for everybody. They're not for you know the brand new trader. It's it's for people who've been trading for a while. They're just kind of stuck in that rut. Uh, they just need kind of a different advantage or kind of a different view of the market. Uh, everybody talks about trading normal. Uh, and this is kind of not the normal, right? This is uh, kind of something that there's a very, very specific edge to this. This is something that you need to be very, very patient for. So you've, if you've been kind of, uh, you know, wondering and curious uh, about pivots and see if it's a right fit for you, uh, tonight is the last day to take advantage of that uh, special uh, price. I think it's like 47 bucks. Uh, if nothing at all, you, you're getting... Uh, the four-hour workshop of the PS60 theory, just breaking down the theory. And again, you could use it for Bitcoin, crypto, uh, mid-cap, small-cap, and obviously beta uh, that I trade. Because again, you're, you're looking to trade the process. You're not looking to trade individual stocks. So uh, if you are on the fence, just kind of announce what today's the last day uh, to take advantage of it. And if you do, I think you will uh, enjoy it. So let's get uh, into the markets. Uh, again, market continues Pretty, you know, pretty historic run. Uh, Dow topped uh, 30,000 for the first time. Not that it means anything. I remember the Dow going first time uh, 9,000 and 10,000, 15. It doesn't matter, right? You're not getting a special uh, bonus check uh, in your bank account. I give you my word. But it is pretty cool. It's uh, water cooler talk uh, considering how horrid, horrific. I mean, all these, uh, you know, really bad adjectives you could describe 2020. The market has stand out, has stood out. Uh, as being one of the constant uh, good things out there uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And I guess, yes, it defined log logic and it, it's a completely, uh, you know, it completely mirrors the whole George Costanza theory of, you know, completely do the opposite of what's logical. But again, that's what the market we have. And I know a lot of people have been doing uh, incredibly well this year. A lot of people started trading this year. And I just want you guys to understand this will end. Okay, this will absolutely end again when, when we were in the heyday during the dot com days. Again, and again, my friends won't admit this, and I've, I've kind of admitted this to myself years ago that you know we got lucky during the dot com craze. Okay, nobody knew how to trade, and this is not the first time you hear me saying that. And we got lucky because it was a, an incredibly hot market, nobody knew what we were doing. Uh, all we were doing is taking overnights on really, really hot, exaggerated stocks, and because it was the new hot thing, the dot com. We, you know, basically did okay. Um, and this is kind of the second coming of dot com. Uh, people are believing that they're doing something special in an environment like this, and they're not. Um, I think this is an environment that, uh, if you, if you've watched a, a previous interview with myself and my former uh, mentor, rest in peace, Meyer Hoffman, he basically was making comments about during the dot com era and said it's not that we were doing anything right. The market was so strong, this didn't make a difference where you entered the trade. And again, of course, I'm paraphrasing, but the market would make you right. And I, and I think that's where a lot of new traders are, are being confused. Um, you know, they think they're doing something right. And then the reality is probably if you had to sit back a year from now, two years from now, five years from now, and kind of think about this time, you'll also realize that, yeah, you might have been applying some things that were good, right? And you, and you first started out. But, but again, remember... Everything is being exaggerated. Usually, you do not see uh, stocks going up three, four, five, eight hundred percent uh, for the year, right? You just don't. Uh, when you look at, for example, like a Zoom, and it's up whatever the hell it's up for the year, it doesn't even crack the top three of the biggest percentage winners for the year. So the market is exaggerated, and I think uh, the you know the novice trader. Uh, they're catching a wave, which is great. Again, I think if you start trading, it's so hard to begin with. I mean, it's just so hard as you keep on going, but it's just such a hard business to understand, especially wrap your brain about all the moving parts. So it's nice to get 
that initial, you know, the initial wave that you're riding. But don't think for a second you're doing something uh, that's right. The market is making you right. The market uh, that usually that you would buy that $12, $15 stock in, in a normal interval would, would, would sit in the 30 cent range throughout the whole day, right? A market like this, the stock is going up a dollar and a half, two dollars throughout the same interval. So it, again, it's great that you're catching the wave, but just understand it's going to stop. And every hot market stops. So we're just trying to um, you know, just really grasp and hold on to this tape as long as possible because again, eventually when things get tired and buyers go on strike and they do in every aggressive market, you're going to have to really figure out how to trade, okay? And then you're going to realize what I realized and all my friends realized uh, that came nine, you know, 2001 through 2003, especially for me, I didn't make a penny from 2001, 2003 is we didn't know how to trade. We got very, very lucky. We were in the right place at the right time. Now you got to figure things out. So before you get to that point, okay, it's very, very important to kind of take a step back and realize what's working and what's not. What's driving this market right now and why is it so exaggerated? And I think the most simplistic point of view, and I tweeted, I tweeted this out, I think it was yesterday. Um, I'm not an options trader. I'm probably the most novice option trader you're probably going to meet. I, I've been doing this now almost 21 years. I don't trade options. I'm an equity guy. But the one thing that I, I realized, you know, in the last year, year and a half, and this is one of my biggest takeaways, uh, especially for 2020, any speculation money you've, you've seen this year, right? Any move, like a, a NEO, for example, right? Like a NEO or recently like a PLTR, okay? Like one of these really, really great moves. It started with really aggressive option flow, like really deep out of the money option flow. And that's been kind of the fuse that have been setting the fire to a lot of these names, a lot of these big, big runners uh, in 2020. And it all starts out the same way. And again, you've seen a lot of my videos, we're talking about you know stocks, like for example, like Amazon. I'll give you a perfect example, like Amazon, You know, four days ago, we talked about uh, the sneaky pivot 3044. They were coming for the 3200, the 3300, 3400 calls, yada, yada, yada. Two days later, the stock's at 3200. Obviously, massive call buying in Tesla for the last two weeks as well. You've seen what happened there. But I think it all stems from, from, from the same core, the same foundation. And for all you new traders, if you just take away one thing Thing from this year, okay, and the aggression and kind of eliminate the noise and eliminate the euphoria, you'll realize that just kind of what I've just been saying, a lot of these names have been sparked exactly the same way. So for example, you know, take a stock like FSR, right? So FSR had this really, really big uh, two, three day run and, you know, it's resting now, it had this big run, it broke out. Again, we, had, we talked about a nausea about the pivot there at the $17, 18.30 level, it broke out 21.60, had a really, really big, big move on Friday. We'll talk about the individual pivots in a second. But what's driving this market and had a really good rest, you can see here, it had a nice rest here, rest day compared to the $6 move prior. We started seeing, again, continuation of option flow uh, for Friday's session, the, the December 25s. Again, the stock's at $20 a share, why are they buying the out-of-the-money calls? Again, that's where, you know, that's where the driving force of price per share keeps on flowing. And the option market for at least 2020, because again, I've been really using option flow uh, in all my trading for the last year, year and change. I've, I've realized the same thing. You know, it come, the, the option market comes first. They're buying, you know, it's the same formula. They're buying the near-term expiration deep out of the money calls and once it confirms the previous range whether it's right whether it's daily okay daily or macro or even channels in between that's what sparks the stock and that's when you start seeing uh the price really start to escalate because again the options market has been driving the equity market now for the last year and you see this with the smaller cap names you see this with obviously with beta names uh, you know as early as two weeks ago when tesla broke out you know, broke out above this whole range here. And we, you know, we've been, knock on wood, we've been catching Tesla incredibly well. When it broke out above this whole five, 462 level, that's when you started seeing the 500s, the 550 calls being traded for two weeks out, right? Now we're seeing in this massive, massive run, now we're seeing, and you go, you go back to uh, even Friday session, you're seeing the 700s, the 720 calls. A couple of days ago, you saw the 1,050 calls. So this is what's driving the market. So the one takeaway, uh, especially for you new traders, even if you don't trade on the option side, and, and I've been saying this throughout the year, but it really does 
hold a lot of water, especially going into 2021. We, we don't know what we're going to get in 2021. Maybe we get a continuation market of what we saw uh, in 2020. Uh, maybe the market becomes more tamed, and instead of having a stock go from 10 to 15 in 24 hours, maybe the stock goes from $10 to 11, right? Maybe it goes from $10 to 10.50. But the common denominator, what I'm going to continue to use uh, in my in my arsenal, you know, is the option order flow. Pay attention to the hot money. So even if you don't trade options, get yourself an option scanner. Okay, uh, most of them are like this. This three companies are really good. They're all comparable. Uh, flow Algo is really good. Uh, Cheddar is pretty good, uh, and uh, Trade Alerts are all good. They're all comparable. Uh, they range from like 150 bucks to like 350 bucks. Right. It, it's so necessary to understand why your stocks are moving right it, it's 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 so crucial to really understand that you know it's giving you so much more of a dynamic look knowing that people are going in two three four five hundred thousand a million dollars worth of premium in a name that you're about to trade and once that channel finally confirms you already know with confidence you're about to enter a trade that some guy just paid 1.5 million dollars in premium just yesterday for a trade that's five dollars out of the money expiring in two weeks so it's a it's an incredible tool even if you don't trade options it's so necessary to understand the order flow and the significance of it invest in your business guys believe me you don't need a five thousand dollar trading setup okay i've been buying I've, i've been doing this for 21 years i've been buying dell desktops the dell towers from best buy Okay, it's four or five hundred bucks. You don't need a five thousand dollar setup. So you don't need you know a thousand dollar monitors. Okay, invest in things that are going to matter and things invest in things that are going to enhance your trading ability, not nonsense cosmetic stuff that you're you know you're you're tweeting out on, on social media. Spend 150 bucks on option flow. Okay, you're you're going to see why PLTR had this massive run. Okay, this massive run didn't start up here. Okay, they were coming for the $15 calls right here when the stock broke out. They were coming for $20 calls when the stock was consolidating this area in here. And now you're seeing ridiculous call buying. You're seeing the the 40s, the 45s. I mean, just really, really. But again, the move is gone. The trade is over. But the meat of the bone started when you started seeing very, very aggressive option flow. And once it started confirming uh, on the daily channel, had made their big move. So don't waste your money on nonsense, uh, you know, such as you know, expensive monitors or expensive, you know, gaming plot. I, I, I give you my word, and anybody's been trading for a long time, you can spend four or five hundred bucks on a desk or Hewlett Packard tower. I guarantee you, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be worse or better. That if you're spending five thousand dollars to sit in a really really cool chair with lights and all that stuff in your keyboard, I, I give you my word, you're not going to become a better trader. But things like Option Flow Scanner is going to make you a better trader because again, you're not guessing why the volume is coming in. You're seeing it in front of you, and it's so important again to have as many edges as possible in your tool chest that you you can apply to the market on a day to day basis. So hopefully that works. Again, uh, Flow Algo is pretty cool. That's the one I use. Uh, Cheddar is. From what I hear, is pretty decent. Um, Trade Alerts is good as well. It's a little more pricier than the other two, but they're all comparable. Again, as long as you're seeing uh, where the hot money bets are being played uh, on a daily basis right in front of you, it's much more easier with confidence to go in the same trade when uh, it confirms technically. So uh, let's quickly get into the market. Again, Dow, 30,000. Oh, okay, who cares? Uh, I think the most important point is kind of what the market is doing. Uh, we, you know, we've been watching this video for the last three, four days. We saw it. We've been talking about the importance of this uh, 294 confirmation on the queues. We're breaking out now close to, uh, again, close to st stone's throw away from 52-week highs. Uh, we finally started seeing some beta life, and I think that's the most important point uh, kind of going into this week. We talked about the, the importance uh, of the 30, uh, of the 30, 30, excuse me, 3144 level that broke out. Uh, again, talk about you know the theme of option flow. Again, we're still seeing uh, those 3200 in the money with size going into this week. We started seeing 3300 expiring next week. Again, this is it's 3185. Again, if you start seeing Monday morning, uh, you know they're coming for the 3300 weeklies. Guys, you have 100 points in the trade, and if it confirms this previous channel here, probably more chances than not, it's going to catch up to the the money flow. Uh, Netflix, we saw. 
finally a little bit of life coming in on Netflix. And again, common denominator. Guys were coming in uh, on Friday for this week's, right? For this week's and December's uh, 510, 530 calls. Again, the stock is 491. We had a, you know, I really caught a nice little pivot uh, as my last trade of the day, of the week. Uh, on Friday, uh, we'll talk about the, again, pivots in a second. But again, once you start seeing come Monday morning, Tuesday morning, they're coming for the 510s, 520s. All you have to do now is look at the daily channel. Once it confirms that daily channel, you already know these guys are betting four, five, six hundred thousand, a million dollars that the stock will be at 510, 530 two weeks from now. Again, all you need to do is wait for that confirmation uh, to come as well. So it's incredibly, incredibly important to follow the option flow in these names. But again, uh, beta, little by little, they're starting to wake up. Again, they're not exactly trailing uh, the QQQs, which is very, very odd, because if you look at the NASDAQ, it was up 3%. A lot of these names are still stuck, but you can see Facebook, right? Facebook is, is kind of mirroring uh, the, the QQQ channel, but the funny thing is it's still lagging. So Facebook, not out of the woods, but if it starts taking out this channel right here, and again, still you know several dollars away, but if it starts taking out the channel, look how much room you have. So if you start seeing uh, option flow coming in for the 300 weeklies, right? Look how much room you have. Obviously, if it confirms, you have a, you have a puncher's chance for the stock to get there. So it's very, very important to understand that. Uh, really solid week this week. Again, uh, the SPAC names going nuts. Um, the EV names, again, FSR was awesome on Thursday. Uh, was good on Friday. We'll talk about it in a second. Um, so there's still a lot of speculation money, but just guys really understand this. I said this at some point in the middle of, of 2000, in the middle of the internet craze, I turned around and I said, this is great. This is the greatest thing ever. It's never going to end. Yada, yada, yada. It ended four months later. Okay. It's going to end. I'm preparing you for it. You know, if you don't believe me, go back through history. Every great bull market ends. And eventually, and again, we don't know. Is it going to be next week, the following week, next month, three months, maybe a year from now? We don't know. But at least mentally prepare yourself. So what can you do instead of chasing the stocks that are already gone, right? Like a CGC. And again, I kind of like the pot stocks this week. But instead of a chasing a stock like this that is already gone, from you know from nineteen dollars to thirty, you know maybe look at a tel you know a tell rate, right? Again, stock is still coming out of a range, right? You don't want to buy anything that already made its move. So for example, you know look at look at Neo, right? Look at Neo. Neo has gone from like what, from like four dollars just from June in, into the fifties. Okay, you don't want to trade a stock like that. You want to trade a stock that came out of the range, and this is why FSR was such a powerful move because people were looking for the next one to come out of the range, and when it did, it finally did what it had to do. So the stocks that have gone, there is no edge to them. For example, there is no edge for me on Tesla anymore. There really isn't. The only way you want to play Tesla, and again, everybody knows right now the, the, the hedge funds are front running the index funds. Uh, ahead of their inclusion. We don't want to buy this thing on strength. You want to buy this thing on we on weakness. That's where your edge is in the stock. I mean, the stock broke out at several levels over the last two weeks. Okay. It broke out above the 460 level. It broke out above the 502 level. Those were your breakout levels. This is all continuation. And the one thing that continuation means, the higher the price is away from its daily channel, the higher probability it's going to fail. So again, the last thing you want to do is to play musical chairs. Again, you don't want to do that. You don't want to just put on the blinders and hope that God it continues. Hope is not a strategy. Hope is not a process. Hope is hope, right? Hope is hope. Hope is hope. Hope is prayer. We don't, we're not in the hoping and praying business. We're in collecting data and reacting. The, the only value that's left, and again, it's stock ran to 600. That's great. You know, 700 call buyers. That's great. But again, the last thing you want to do is put on your trade at $600 a share, hoping it gets to 700. What you want to do is a, get a pullback into the rising support, whether it's the five day, the 60 minute, the 60 minute view. And if the stock holds that level and remounts, at least you have a level that you can trade against. And it's giving you a defined risk versus while well, the stock is up 200 points in the last five days, I hope it's going higher. I think it's going higher. Again, don't think, okay? We're, we're not smart enough to think. I'm an idiot, okay? I don't think. We react. We react and collect data and make sure our money is safe. So be very, very important. So again, there's no value in Tesla. There's no value in the NEO, right? And it's very, very, art, you know, you can make an argument. There's really no advantage in that group anymore. It's just pure momentum. But again, it's always important to say, I'd rather sell a day early than a sell late. Again, my whole trading philosophy is sell when you want to, not when you have to. And again, this market will end. Mark my words. Again, you don't believe it now. And hopefully it doesn't end uh, anytime soon. I'm with you. Trust me. I'm with you. I'm, I'm feeling this market. I love the action. I'm even trading 
uh, more and more non-beta every single day, but I'm also conscious to know that my professional history is going to be uh, repeated, has been repeated numerous times uh, since the 99 start of my career. And the point is to prepare yourself ahead of time instead of missing out on that musical chair uh, final results. So be very, very careful. So going into this week, again, how can you not be bullish? Okay, market is just really giving you no reason not to be bullish. Uh, but again, the key is this week, find the groups that are starting to come out of their ranges. And again, you, they're very hard to find value. And the market has been going up uh, in a moonshot for the you know for the last year, two years, almost three years, right? Four years, you could even make an argument. Uh, you know, it's very very hard to get value, so you have to find that value, and you have to wait for the value. So instead of you know chasing uh, Tesla at six hundred, you know, wait for Facebook to come out. And again, I'm not saying Facebook is me coming out for Monday, right? It still has to confirm the channel. But isn't this a better play, right? Isn't this a, a more high definition play than a chart that looks like this, right? Isn't Apple a better look, right? Confirming the 10 day moving average. Think about it, isn't Apple a better look than, than you know, isn't a, Apple better look here than it was up here? So it's very, very important to kind of wait and just understand even though the lights are very, very bright, you don't have to trade every single day. You don't have to be the, the person jumping into the pool and, and trying to figure out if there's actually water. Just pace yourself, okay? There's no rule. It's not about how many trades you put on. It's how many trades you put on properly. Uh, again, I'm bullish going into this week. Um, there's, there's definitely names I like uh, going into this week, but it's not names that you would normally turn around and say, wow, this is a day trader's uh, dream. Like, again, look at Honeywell, right? Not sexy, right? Think about it. Not a sexy channel. It had this really, really big run. Then it went sideways for three weeks. But look at this channel here. Right? You don't need to be in this sexy trade. Look at this channel. It's gotten rejected here twice at the same level. And all you have to do is look at the chart. Okay, It's gotten rejected twice at the same level. If it confirms, you have $10 worth of upside with a dollar risk. Again, that is value. Again, instead of chasing the CGC, look at Tilray. Right? If you want to be in the same group and you want to be in momentum names, again, kind of going back into our previous discussion, we saw $9 calls coming in. We saw $10 calls coming in. If you know, again, there's buyers coming in from the $9, $10 area. If it can just reclaim this whole linear regression line, maybe it does, does go back to $9, $10 a share. But again, look for value. Don't look for names uh, that really, really exploded. Even a name like SDGR had this monster, monster move, but at least you can see some sort of consolidation. First close above supply. There's some volume coming in on the name. If it starts confirming this channel, look how much room you have. So you have plays that you can risk a dollar for a potential $10 run. That's where the value is. And again, these plays are not going to just jump at you. You have to wait for them. You have to research them. You have to be putting yourself in a position when they do confirm. And especially if you get a kicker in the options market, you know you have a validated uh, green light. So let's talk about uh, Friday session. Uh, the funny thing was I wasn't even planning to trade on Friday. I was so hung over from Thanksgiving, if that's possible. I was in such food coma that I, I, I was disgusting. Like I wanted to crawl out of my skin. So I turned around and I said, ah, I don't even know if I want to trade. And then once the lights turned on, the juice is flowing, you know you're in the hot market, yada, yada, yada. You know, I traded three things. So FSR, again, we caught that monster breakout uh, from Thursday. Uh, we talked about it on, on Thursday's video. Uh, FSR, red to green for experienced traders. Note, this is not a pivot, just momentum. Uh, $22 needs to build for, from Wednesday's explosion. So here was FSR. I mean, this is a monster move, right? So here was FSR. Uh, it opened up down. It held the rising support. And again, this is what we talk about. You see this rising support, everybody? It held rising support, went red to green, took out $22, and it traded right to the 2360s, which is the upper Bollinger Band. Again, this is what we talk about, supply and demand, knowing where supply is going to end. So just an absolute monster trader uh, for the last two days. Congratulations to all you guys who've been riding. And again, just keep in mind, you have those, uh, somebody, you know, they were coming in, some repeat $25 calls. So you'd like to see the stock kind of go sideways for the next couple of days. But if they start coming in again with those $25 calls, uh, definitely on watch. Uh, Kodak, I kind of like never got uh, to the uh, 850 area. And again, just to give you an idea how specific, uh, how specific these pivots are, uh, NVIDIA, 537 sneaky area needs to build 540, obviously macro. NVIDIA traded the 536.30s, okay? So again, these numbers are very, very specific. That's why we don't try to anticipate the move. We've waited for them. So I still like NVIDIA, but again, $7 
uh, off its highs. Uh, this was my last trade of uh, the week. Uh, Netflix uh, 488 50, 489 needs to build. Put in its opening candle to about 490. And then the option flow market kicked in. Guys were coming in for the 490, excuse me, for the 530 calls. We saw a couple. And once it, you know, once it remounted 490, um, you know, I got longer than 490 area. And then all of a sudden, stock exploded to the 493 area. And the reason why 493, this wasn't a macro channel. If you look at the, if you look at the daily chart, I, I kind of knew it was going to stop at the 493 level because again, you see this supply here, right? Daily supply. So for this thing to really wake up, it's going to need to clear out this whole channel here. And macro-wise, if it reclaims 500, then you have a whole different matzo ball on your hands. But again, not every single trade needs to be this massive, massive move. Uh, Boeing, I still like, never got uh, into, the, into that area here. Uh, Amazon, again, continues to be really good here. I, you know, I like this. It never got to the 32.22 area. But this is the area I still like for this week. I still think, you know, it sees 3,300 if it confirms. Again, the name of the game is if it confirms. Do not anticipate. That's when you get destroyed in your account. Uh, Square, 215 rejected several times. Needs to build. Again, that's the magic number. It got nowhere near that on Friday. Uh, Zoom. Zoom reports on uh, Zoom reports tomorrow. Okay. Uh, it'll be very, very interesting to see. Again, they are the prime uh, beneficiary from the whole stay at home movement. Uh, you know, again, we've been kind of trading uh, Zoom uh, for the whole week. Uh, you know, I caught a nice little pivot on Zoom as well on Friday. 456 needs to build. And here's Zoom, right? We talked about this on Thursday's video as well, going to the 470s. So it finally took out this whole channel and traded right into the 50-day moving average of 474. Again, they report after the close. But again, just keep an eye on the options mark to see uh, where the bets are being read. And again, uh, FSR, just an absolute monster move. Uh, first supply, 463 obviously hit, went to the 470s. Uh, yeah, here's, here's what we're talking about. This December 530 call buyer steps in. Really, really nice move on Netflix to end the week, uh, and that's it, right? And that's it. So uh, the moral of the story is, guys, just remember two things. Uh, the market is hot until it's not. Uh, don't trade because you're trading out of emotion. It's very, very important. You hear that all the time. But in this type of environment, it's much more exaggerated. Your, your, your emotions, your love, your hate, your excitement levels uh, are all going to be enhanced because the market is totally exaggerated. So take a step back. Just listen to what I've been saying. I've been doing this for almost 21 years now. Uh, the market will end. So mentally prepare yourself. Again, don't trade the overextended setups. Trade the ones in the same group that are coming out of ranges, at least you have a defined look. At least you have the ability to get more meat on the bone if it goes. Because if not, if you're buying a stock at 14 and it just was $7 24 hours ago, the probability of you getting a pullback is a lot higher. So guys, I wish everybody the best. Have an awesome uh, December. And with God's help, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.